So we need to talk about the TCP part of the tower defense. So if you haven't seen the tower defense thing, I'll put it in the description. It's the higher level overview of the project. But a lot of people asked about how does the TCP side of things work? So I'm gonna kind of walk through that in much more detail than I was. All right, so the first thing you need to understand, uh oh, look at that, we have Twitch chat up there. Get the hell out of there. All right, so the first thing you need to understand is that you don't have to understand how TCP works to use it. The things about TCP that are very, very important is is one, it can take a lot of data and it can send it across uh, the internet. This is very, very important. I'll explain why here in a second. And two, it is reliable and in order, meaning you can send structured data. This is very, very important for our game. Now, a lot of people are going to ask, why not UDP? Well, really, I just don't have time to build all of everything and UDP is hard to do. One thing that UDP doesn't do is it doesn't do all of the data. Instead, you have to send out a packet of data. You cannot send out all the data you want, just one packet. You have to control the packets on both sides. Second, it's not reliable, it's not in order. That means you have to build reliability and order into the protocol that's used with UDP. But the thing about UDP is it's very, very fast. It's stateless. You just start shooting data towards it. And with TCP, you have to do like this three-way handshake, and it's just a little bit slower. There's also a lot of acts with it. In it, whereas with UDP, you can kind of design how you want to be reliable. RTP is a good example of this. All right, so with that in mind, whenever you send a bunch of data, let's just pretend we're going to send a big old JSON object full of stuff, and this is, say, 10K worth of data. All right, let's just pretend it's in a string. Now, you can imagine all of this is just ASCII characters, so it can directly be a memory buffer. When I send this in TCP, you can imagine that I'm going to chunk it out. Maybe let's just say we're chunking it out 1K at a time. How much data you can put per packet is called the MTU, the MTU, right? And MTU is called the Maximum Transmission Unit uh, Network. There we go. And this will tell you how big you can send packets across the internet. Typically, I see a lot of things say either 14 or 1500. There's like specific answers, 14. 72 or whatever it is. Don't worry about that. For now, let's just say that we send 10 uh, or 1,000 bytes at a time. That means our 10K package becomes 10 TCP packets. What TCP is going to do is send each one of these packets out. And inside the packet header, they're gonna have something like a checksum. So that way, in case things go bad on the internet, we'll know. And then they'll also have an index. This is index one, this is index two, this is index three. And they will piece back together the message to me and start piping it out. But here's the deal. The meaning of the data is on me. The order and reliability and the structure of the data is on TCP. That means if I send out one, two, three, four, five, TCP may send out one, two, three in one packet, and then four and five in another packet, and I will receive potentially two network calls that let me know that I've received one, two, three, and that I've also then received four and five. It's up to me to put these together and do something with it. So this is where we get into how our protocol actually looks. So the protocol that we've done right now is a very, very simple one. The very first byte of anything I send is going to be the version. This is super, super important. If you ever do any sort of binary anything, just remember to always put a version flag in there. So if the first byte I read isn't the version I expect, I cannot parse this packet. I don't know it. Get it out of my face. The next one is the command. This is going to tell me how I need to parse the rest of the data. Okay. The third one is going to be the length. And this will be two bytes, just in case we need to make the length long enough to be able to, you know, parse, you know, like if I have to send a whole board with the data, that's going to exceed one byte. One byte is 256 bytes. Uh, possible possible values, which means uh, and an MTU could be huge, right? The packet I could be sending could be 10K. I can't represent that. But with two bytes, I can represent up to 65K, which is a tons of data. I'm never going to send something that large. And then the rest of it is going to be the data. Okay, so let's kind of go through how this parsing actually works really quickly. So it's pretty, pretty simple. If I start reading here, in fact, I believe I have the code right here. There we go. So I have the command. If I want to read out the data, I'm going to get a bytes array in. I'm going to check the first one. Is the version true? No, it's not. I'm done. I'm aired. I cannot do this. Next, I'm going to read, which is called network order or big Indian. I'm going to read network order bytes two and above, and I'm gonna read 16 bits or two bytes. Now remember, if you remember our previous one we were just looking at, uh, where are you? Where are you? We do two bytes to length starting at the second byte. And so you can see it right here. 
the second byte right here. Okay, and then I go, okay, here's the end. The end is gonna be the header size, which is four bytes, plus the length of data. And that makes sense, because again, this is length data. This is four bytes, one for version, one for command, one for length. Uh, I don't know why I keep going back to here. Uh, anyways, so if our length isn't long enough, we can't process this packet of data. We can't do anything with it. Else, I say the command is the first byte, the data is from the header size all the way to the end, store these two things, and I've just unmarshaled that binary data into the TCP packet. And turning it into binary data is also really simple because I just simply take the length of the data, that's the length, I make that into a little bit of a binary thing, put the UTF-16 in there, next I make another binary packet where I put the version as the first byte, the command as the second byte, spread the two bytes in for the length data, and then spread the rest of the data in. Just like this, I just did the inverse operation of parsing it. It's pretty straightforward. And so that's all I have to do. So as I get all this data coming in, I just simply have to read out until I hit a packet that I can process. Now the cool part is if I look under connection, I believe this is, uh, there we go. It's pretty simple. I made a pretty simple little frame reader. So I try to follow the uh, uh, IO reader uh, interface just to make it so that it's easy to interface with other people. But what I did here is that I have this. I have, I'm gonna read some data and I'm gonna return out to you an int and an error. The first thing I try to do is take my previous amount of data that I have. Cause imagine you sent me enough data that I could actually have like two packets in a single data that you sent me. Well, I'm gonna take my previous data that I've so far stored and see, can I parse out a packet? If I can parse out a packet, well, guess what? Then I'm gonna use that data and hand it back. I'm gonna copy out my previous into the data and hand back that. Okay, here you go. If I don't have enough data, I'm gonna wait on read. That means I'm waiting for TCP data to come in. When that data comes in, I just append it to my previous and then go in this loop. So every single time, I just keep running this loop until I have enough data to parse out one packet. And then I return that byte array and say, hey, you can read this now, which means that the thing that's producing the TCP packets, when I call read on my connection, it actually gets out the perfect amount of data to be able to read a TCP command every single time. So it's just really simple to use. And I just thought this was a lot of fun to do. Super, super neat. Uh, learned a lot. I made so many stupid mistakes with Go. Oh my goodness, I'm learning Go. The amount of times I made mistakes with just like any sort of like, a, uh, you know, an array of connection, and I was still using connections that I wasn't meaning to use and all this kind of stuff and and how copying works and all that and it was just a heartache I'll tell you that much I was hurting but we got over it everything's working great and if I jump over here and I go back to this I'm going to start my server really quickly and then I'm going to go right here you'll notice that right here you'll notice that the game is starting to play right here and these windows are just randomly opening and closing and now the game is remaining in sync and playing across all four windows even though we're disconnecting and reconnecting randomly. So it's pretty cool. I'm really, really happy with where things are going. And so the next kind of few streams I'm going to be doing is really just focused on how do I send color down? Because that's where things get really difficult. Because I want to be able to send down as little data as possible to the point where I'm only sending down maybe 200, 500, 1,000 bytes worth of data to represent all these different screen changes. And I have to be able to include color it's going to be a little bit difficult, but we're going to make it work, and I have never been more excited. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed this little bit more deep dive into what I'm working on. The color stuff is going to be a lot harder. We'll see how it goes, but I think I'm going to be successful here. The name is the Prime.